Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Martinsville, Virginia, Martinsville Speedway for the STP 500 this Sunday. It's the first of two races here at Martinsville uh, during the season. It is a 0.526 mile 500 lap race on what can be called the paperclip just from the shape it's got two long uh, the front stretch and the back stretch a lot of braking going on in the corners uh, going into turn one and into turn three going to be a lot of brakes going on there a lot of bumping and banging this is going to test uh, drivers patience we're back to the regular rules package um, original without the air ducts we do have the rear spoiler but there is no tape and spacer so we're at 750 horsepower for this race qualifying and practices are now over it was a little bit different this week we had the first two practices on saturday morning and then qualifying after the truck race tonight so one thing to keep in mind is that these after qualifying here the cars are impounded are not to be touched on the morning that's when they're going to be doing the post qualifying inspection so the starting order could change from what you see in my cheat sheet what we're going to talk about here today so make sure to double check that come uh, morning time before you lock your lineups in um, before the the lineup lock tomorrow so just looking at one of these stats this is from mrm.com website so you can kind of have a look at some of the history of the track, a whole bunch of things going on. What I found interesting was the starting positions from the race winners. Track position is very huge. As you can, as you can see, there's double-digit wins coming from the first, second, third, and fourth starting positions. There's no double digits coming from any other starting position, um, even top five, top ten there. So starting up front is definitely going to be key, something we're going to definitely pay attention to here this week, especially on FanDuel where place differential maybe isn't quite as important. With that, let's just jump into the sheet here. I'll uh, have a look at some of the core plays. The ones that are core are going to be in green. Blue are going to be some of my GPP plays. Red are going to be the ones I'm fading. Um, I've got some labeled here, FanDuel only. So let's have a look at that. So first up is Kyle Busch. He's the top play of the week. Coming in red hot with back-to-back -back wins at Auto Club Speedway and ISM Raceway. He's the only driver with four top fives so far this season, and he's the only driver with a top ten in at least or in every race so far this season and going back to phoenix last year he's got seven straight finishes of six they're better with three wins in there so not only is he red hot he's coming back to martinsville where he's got seven straight top five finishes with two wins in that time as well he's got some place differential value this week starting 14th um, and he was fifth in first practice, 18th in second practice, but he was top three in 10 lap averages in both those practices. I can see him making it through the field. Looks like he's got that winning upside for sure. He's got the speed there um, to get up front and contend. Could even see him lead some laps uh, in stage two, stage three there as well. Second driver, core driver here this week is going to be Martin Trex Jr. Nice discount coming off of him and Kozlowski there at 11.9 on DraftKings, 13.5 on FanDuel. He's starting ninth, so he does give us some place differential value there as well. And despite searching for his first short track win, he's been very consistent here with three straight top fives. Um, almost won the race here last year. Logano bumped him out of the way in the playoffs there to, to lock up his spot at Homestead. So he was very close to grabbing that win there. Um, probably coming back this week, I could definitely see a top five from him. He was like his teammate Kyle Busch there. He showed top three speed in both 10 lap averages in both of those practices this morning. So that's very good to see there. Um, and he's finished seventh or better here at Martinsville on six of his last seven trips. So definitely looking at Martin Trex Jr. as a core driver at that price range there. So that's going to leave Brad Kozlowski and Joey Logano. I think both are excellent for GPPs. If you're going to be fading Kyle Busch at the top, I think you can go with both of them. Um, they're both starting top three. Logano got the pole, so I think he's got the best chance to get out front and lead 100-plus laps, you know, lead the first stage 
or most of the first stage, even some of the second stage, I think Kozlowski could get in there and lead some laps there as well early in the race, those two. Um, I'd like them a little bit better for Fandle, where finish position is a little more important. I definitely think they're both going to be top five at the end of the race, barring any uh, crashes, uh, knocked out of the race, engine problems, things like that. Same with Kevin Harvick. I don't think he's going to dominate. I don't think he's going to lead a ton of laps. Looking more towards him as a um, would be on DraftKings GPP play at 10.8, just simply because he is a you know a nice discount off those top four drivers. And then FanDuel, I think we can. I think he's another top five car this week. It looks like he was fourth in 10 lap averages in that second practice, eighth in one lap, top 10. Um, and 10 lap averages in the first one. So I definitely think he's got a top 10 car, top 5 upside. Uh, FanDuel, he would be a play in all formats at that discount there for him. Denny Hamlin, someone I'm looking at on FanDuel as well. He started inside the top 5. He's He's been very good here, really good short track racer. He's got 5 wins here in his career, um, none in a while. But looking at the 10 lap averages, he was 6th in both 10 lap averages in both those practices. So I think the upside is there for a top 5 for him as well probably floor of somewhere in that 6th to 8th kind of range for Hamlin this week. Another core play on both sides is going to be Clint Boyer. He showed a ton of speed. He was 1st in the first practice, 5th in 10 lap average, then he was 12th in the second practice, but he was 2nd in 10 lap averages, so he's got top 5 speed there. Looks like he's got a good long run car. Didn't quite do so well in the final round of qualifying. He's going to start 11th this week, and you know if he's a 5th to 8th place car, it looks like that's what he's going to be. He's going to pick you up some fan or some uh, place differential value, which is good for FanDuel and starting, you know, finishing fifth to eighth there. If he's going to be doing that, that's that's some good value at eleven seven on FanDuel for that fin finishing position for him. And then on both sides of him there, I like uh, Almirola and Chase Elliott in that eight K range. Um, Almirola just simply because he's starting second. I don't think he's going to lead a lot of laps. He's going to be starting on the outside. Um, lane to start the race, uh, provided Logano does take that inside, which is a bit of an advantage. Could see Almirola fall back there, so um, it's going to be more of his finishing position at the end of the day I was going to go, so I'm definitely looking at him as uh, mostly a fan duel play, GPP on both. Chase Elliott starting eighth. He was first in practice two. Didn't show quite the best 10 lap average, so long run car, but top 10 definitely, so I think he's got that upside. Um, not as safe as others with the speed that he's shown and where he's starting, but definitely a nice GPP pivot there. Eric Jones stands out. Um, Going to be more of a GPP play. I've got him labeled as a core play here just because I like the price in that sub 8K range. If you're building a balanced kind of cash game lineup, he starts 19th. Looks like he's got a lot of place differential value as he was 14th and 10th in practices, 9th and 11th and 10 lap averages. But he hasn't been great here. He's only had two um, top 20 finishes in his two trips here. And the, the other two were 26th place finishes. So he's been better here in the spring. I believe his best finishes were in the spring. So he's definitely got that going for him. And I think he's more of like a 12th to 15th place car. So starting 19th, that's enough place differential value for me. At 7,800 on DraftKings especially, where he's going to be a good play here for this this week. Getting down into the value range, Austin Dillon, Daniel Hamrick stand out. They both showed um, some pretty good speed, but they had trouble in qualifying. Dillon will start 30th. Hamrick will start 29th. Dillon would be my favorite of the two as he was 16th and 4th in, in the two practices, 18th and 19th, or sorry, 17th and 13th and 10 lap averages. So it looks like he's got about a 15th to 20th place car. So starting 30th, moving up 15 spots, especially on DraftKings. That's, that's a great play here this week. And uh, he's, he's even cheap enough on FanDuel at 7,700 where you can consider him over there. You're going to get some place differential on FanDuel, just it's not as important as it is on DraftKings. And then Hemrick's more of a GPP play. He didn't show quite the speed this week. Start, you know, 27th and 25th and 10 lap averages in the first practice. He was 7th in practice too. It looked like they were out there running some qualifying runs though, um, which could have skewed it just a little bit. He's 24th and 10 lap average, so that kind of shows a little bit more of, of the kind of car he's got, but starting 29th. If he's going to finish somewhere in that 25th, 24th, 23rd range, um, definitely makes sense. It's 6,600, 6,500 on FanDuel as a low-end punt play in GBPs to try and get, uh, you know, Bush and Truex together, Kozlowski, Logano, uh, two of those top four or five drivers. And then as a pure punt this week, I like David Reagan at 5,600 on DraftKings, $5,000 on FanDuel. He started in 26th, um, which, which I like. Gives him a little bit of place differential value. 
for his price. And he did show, show some speed in practice. He was 26th and 17th in the first two practices and one lap averages. And then he was 15th and 14th. So he showed top 15 long run speed. And what I like about him going back and looking at his races here, looking at the last 10 races, he's finished each and every race. He hasn't been caught up in a crash. He's got top 25s. He was 18th and 25th last year and top 25s in seven of his last nine races here. Um, so th at, at that price, I think that makes a lot of sense as my he's going to be my favorite low-end play. And then some of these guys in white are going to be guys that I will have a little exposure to doing 20 to 50 lineups, but not as much as the guys in yellow um, for for my plays. And then red are just guys that I, I'm fading because either they start, like William Byron, for instance, starting sixth, had, didn't really show... Uh, he had trouble hit the wall in practice one, so I'm not really looking at that 36, but still only showed around that top 20 speed. Even if he gets that top 15 speed and gets up in that range, which I think 12 to 15 would be more of his ceiling, he's still losing place differential points starting six. So definitely not really looking at William Byron or his teammate this week, Alex Bowman. He started in 17th, but he was 18th and second. Uh, didn't really show better speed in that 10-lap averages, which I'm really looking at. You know, the average of the two and both 18th and 19th, both very close in those 10-lap average, so kind of staying away from him. And then Kurt Busch is one I'm not looking at this week. Um, he has been the best Chevy driver so far this year, but Kyle Larson uh, and him both struggle here. So I, I'm looking more at Larson this week to break out as a GPP play. I think a lot of people will be going away from him. Um, just because he started in seventh over Kurt Busch starting twentieth, I just think his ownership is going to be a little bit higher because he is starting twentieth this week, and his speeds were outside, you know, kind of around that top twenty-three to to thirty range. So he's not really showing a lot of speed, and he hasn't been great here. So it kind of checks off all the boxes of someone that I'm going to be fading this week, um, especially if his ownership is going to be you know ten to fifteen percent. Even if it gets higher than that, um, it's definitely going to be a good fade for me this week. You know provided he doesn't finish well, of course, but going into it, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. If you've got any questions on any drivers I talked about, maybe didn't talk about how to construct cash lineups versus GPP lineups, definitely hit me up in either the DFSR chat or Rotor Pros members chat as well, or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Uh, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. A lot more videos coming down the line. We've got baseball starting next week and I have a lot of content out for that as well. And with that, thanks for watching. And let's go get some green screens. Good luck this week, everyone.